first and foremost, this is this is this is a, a series that just came out on the new. It's no longer HBO Max. It's now called just Max, right? Oh, so we're just going with the. Yeah, we're just going. So so it's just called Max now. When this and that's the same streaming platform. What's the one that came out was in Diet? What was that one called? Euphoria. Okay, so it's the same one as that one. Same one where Game of Thrones came out as well, right? Mm-hmm. So. And this, this one's they just called, rebranded to Max. Yeah, pretty much, right? Dropped, and, and dropped and the what did HBO. they combine with it? I think you said that HBO. They, well, they combined it, uh, Cinemax, Discovery, TLC. A grip um, of shit is in them. M- m- many more things, yeah. So this latest one, this latest show is called The Idol, right? Yes. And I remember the first time I even heard about it, I haven't seen it, but you know, we just broke, we just saw the, the key clips right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but basically, I remember the first time I had seen about it is when I went to the weekend's concert and he was promoting, promoting it there. It. He was on there. Yeah, yeah. he was promoting, he was it, promoting it before he got he got up on stage to sing. He would he showed the trailer and he was putting the dates when it was gonna come out. Everything. Yeah, so I, that was when it came. And then now it's finally out. So the red gown kind Could of symbolizes be. what the red That's people what we thought. wearing in the thing were. Yeah, right now Man. we saw it. Yeah. It's interesting. Interesting. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Possibility. Take me back. So th- this show is getting a lot of backlash. Yeah. Um, you know, on the Twitters, as we like to call it. You know, they're, they're, they're getting a lot of backlash right now because they're seeing an artist that they so dearly hold to their heart. And they're seeing him have this persona. And I'm going to be very key with that. Persona and he's acting. Mm-hmm. A certain role. Well, he came out and said that you're supposed to hate that character. You're not supposed to like his character. He he came out and said that. Before or when, after? When, no, no, bef- uh, after. After he saw the backlash of people saying how they hated the character, that the, his lines are very raunchy and it's a very perverted character and, you know, they don't like how he's very manipulative and he's like... No, like that's what I want you to feel. But my thing is, like you're supposed to dislike this character. If, and if hate this it. was like on, um, uh, what is it? F- FX. Mm-hmm. If it was on even what's what's below that Fox, you know, a show that Fox made or ABC made, I get that. But we talking about Max HBO, you know, how everything for, goes. It's kind of like they don't. They have no rules to what they they've made in these shows like Game of Thrones had like incest, Crazy, yeah. incest. Mm-hmm. come on y'all like Euphoria had a lot of stuff too uh, in Euphoria it too. had like trans, trans kids going through tran, get going through um uh, transition like and then even mentally struggling with that and all that so it's but like they didn't have sexual scenes in it as well yeah of course that's my point and the teenage high school you know so it's like uh, I don't know they didn't say anything about oh I don't like how Zendaya's her character no nah, there was a, there was backlash for that too but the show was still that good that they didn't get canceled? No, nah, they keep going. But here's the other thing. This is the this is the thing I see interesting because I was looking at it this morning, how the viewship on it is still there. They're still getting a lot of views. Like, people are still tuning in to watch the episodes, even though they're talking trash about you know, the you episodes. Know, you know what I'm, I can... I'm going to pull Enzo right now. It's almost like anything polarizing. Andrew Tate, people don't like it, but they fucking watch it because they want to pick at more shit that he's going to say. Facts. But but what I was gonna say is maybe because I also there's nothing to watch right now. Everything has died out, and this there's is no the only sports thing is that's big, you know? not only sports, but it's like there's no shows right, right now. Right now, there's not a big series. There's not a big series, so it's like, like uh, the fact that this is a big artist and everything, and then it's like it's having it's has polarizing, like you know, it's maybe garnering that viewership right there, and it's helping it, you know, stay afloat with the ratings. I would say, but I personally but I mean, haven't. They have already established that. There's not gonna be a season two, like unless somehow, yeah, they you know, who knows, you know, decide they, to somebody renew else it. picks it up or something. But I don't know. Yeah. I, it, to me, from what I'm seeing, from what you played on us for us today, bro, I'm gonna watch it in its entirety at home with my wife and see what I, I feel from it, and then tell you next week what I feel. But from what I saw, it definitely gives me. Um, he made a song called Earned It for that movie, um, Fifty Shades of Grey. Fifty Shades of Grey. So yeah. it gives me like the hood version of Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> Like, you know, like, gives me baby boy vibes. Mm -hmm. Gives me, uh, it's not a bad show. It's not as cringe as I thought it would be seeing him act and with the the rat tail on the head. I think he's a good actor. Uh, Yeah, he's 
And for that role, he's doing pretty well. Um, I've never seen him act before, but he, he, he seems to be a good actor in that aspect. And I think the story is, I haven't again, seen it the whole way, but from what you've explained it to me and what you, we've seen, it's also a story of like, again, someone that's, she's an artist, right? Well, the, the idea is they're taking from like the 90s artists. So she's kind of like a representation of like Britney Spears and that type of era. So like in the series, she's like that Britney Spears famous girl, you know, where she's like America's baby. And she's America's baby, but she's trying to go now, go from being the good girl into being the bad girl. And at the same time, she's dealing with the loss of her mother. So her mother kept her in check, right? Like her mother kept her in check to be able to do everything that she did. So now that she doesn't have that person that's doing that for her, she's trying to find herself now without her mom. Yeah. Because like in, in episode two, one thing I didn't show that you guys didn't see, there's a scene where like they keep making her do this music video and she keeps shooting it and shooting it for hours because they're trying to get, to get it to perfection. But it's to the point where she can't stand anymore. And when she takes off the heels that she has on, her feet are bleeding. And like, you know, she has cuts, bruises, like, cause the makeup, they had to put makeup on her to hide her cuts and bruises. And now that's even exposed. So it's, it, and then because she can't do it, she just starts crying out, mom, mom. And it's that idea of like, she's trying so hard to put out a product for her fans because so many people have invested money on her that it's like, it's kind of, the show's trying to depict the side that we don't see of an artist. Yeah, definitely. I think that's just, it's depicting a very harsh reality that a lot of artists go through. They're human beings. And sometimes, you know, I'm, I can include myself in that when, when you see these people and they're like, the way they move, you know what I mean? They have all this, uh, they have their entourage with them and all this stuff. And they move that way and they have all this amounts of money that they're getting paid because of the things they, they, they deal with, you know what I mean? Behind closed doors and all that type of stuff. So, yeah, but, seeing this video, seeing this yeah. show though, at the end of the day, um, I can see why people would feel some type of way, but it's like, you gotta, I, I, for me personally, you always have to just recognize off bat, you're watching a show. Yeah, yeah but the not, thing you're not is watching that the story. So here's the other thing: the story is not really there. Once you guys watch it fully, you guys will understand that. No, I did it, it. but the, the whole the idea, show relies a lot on the sex appeal. The idea, the whole the idea, sex of appeal people, and the sex, it, like that's what tries to carry the show. The whole idea, well, the, like the you story said, the, isn't the, the good first, enough. The first scene that you showed us, bro, that that little speech that the lady was talking to the dude about, yeah. like why are you being a America's cock block and, and yeah. like you know just let them have their sex, drugs, and I forgot what else yeah. she said. Yeah, but you know. Again, it goes back to what I'm saying. It's HBO Max. It's HBO. Mm -hmm. It's Max. That's known for They're that. gonna like the name of the whole organization that's giving you the show is called Max. So that might tell you that they're gonna take it to their Max. You know what I mean? And I, I, I I'm not like I wasn't turned off by what I was watching, um, but it was interesting. It was definitely some stuff that I'm like, whoa, okay. Yeah, and, and I've heard things recently where the weekend's also talking about he's trying to go, he's going to go away from that persona that is the weekend as well. Yeah, he's killing yeah, that he, name. You know what I mean? Already. So, all that. Hey, he's going to go by a different name. I don't know if it's his, like, his actual name. You go by Abel? Uh, but he said that he's, he's done with that artistic name now. So, so that, that, you know, so all of it is a persona at the end of the day. Not, not completely, like, you know, there could be certain things that he's actually been through in his music, but at the end of the day, people have to just, Put that borderline between things, and it's. I hate this cancel culture thing, bro. Because I feel like if it's getting the ratings you're saying it is, I feel like it should get a renewed for another. For I feel the, like ever since, another. but you, you're saying that you hate cancel culture, but I feel like cancel culture's movement died kind of really lost a lot of momentum when Elon Musk bought Twitter. Because now a lot of people that were using the cancel culture to, in a sense, like hinder somebody else's growth or just shit on somebody else or just stop somebody else or just they were using someone like during COVID it was it was crazy how they used it right and then they started using it in politics started using it in other things and 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 um films and all this but now it feels like there's two sides to it and it's like more of an even thing on Twitter so I don't I wouldn't necessarily just blame cancel culture I feel like maybe 
Maybe it's not the cancel culture, but it's the fans that are offended more than anything. It's just, it's not even cancel culture. I honestly feel like we're in a sensitive time now. It's just, this is post-era cancel culture. And now what, what's left after that is just sensitivity. Everybody's just sensitive. Yeah, definitely. Oh uh, Yeah, that's a, that's a very interesting... Because so, I'm, I'm trying to pull up right now. First episode got 3.6 million views on the, off the first week. It's not bad. For the first episode. Um, that's how much is done. I don't know how much the other ones are doing. I know that I saw a chart yesterday where they showed the ones for the third episode, which was the one that dropped yesterday. But they were showing how, like, even that one compared to other series that are out there, it still did more viewship than all the other ones, even though there is backlash. And even though after the second episode, due to that scene at the end, it got canceled. Mm. So, like, who knows if we're going to see, you know, this show ever again or if they're going to try to do it. The other thing that I would throw out there um, for you guys to understand, too, is that the person that was producing it with him, he originally had a female producing it with him. I, I don't know if that's where the backlash comes from, is that he originally had a female doing the show with him and they had it almost finished and then they fired her. Uh, why they fired her or why they decided to let her go, they I don't know. That? Uh, I, I, I haven't seen more upon it to see like, okay, why did they let, let her go? Um, but I understand that uh, from what I understand of the situation or from what I've read is they let her go and then the, the whole show had to be redone again. So um, they had to be redone again prior for it to coming out. So I don't know if that's what made the show look a little more like it doesn't have a story, that it had to be redone. Um, I don't know what was the original vision of the, of the female that was doing it because this this version is done by the weekend and another guy mm. so yeah Interesting. yeah i mean so there's right now that was episode three right well i showed you guys scenes from different episodes i don't know which but one the latest one to. is episode three episode three yes um which is halfway because six, the right? season is only six episodes yeah so if those if those ratings continue i mean hbo max may have to compromise there or do something there uh other controversy though that's been going on right now is uh we just had the the nba finals wrap up but they had one game in miami before it happened before the the denver nuggets became world champions and we had a little incident there uh our uh i don't want to say our friend but i mean you just got a bunch of shirt, shirts from i mean you got me a shirt from him i'm you're, a fan you're wearing it the other day i'm a fan too uh, Conor McGregor has some some rape allegations right now. Started at the Miami Heat ba- in the Miami Heat bathroom, you know, videos circulating, and then and then he's at the he's at a at a club with her afterwards and whatnot. Um, that one, I don't know. That thing just seems very. Uh, it just also seems like a bad situation. The allegations, the video. Uh, I'm not trying to trying to be judgmental here or anything, but like, it's not like it's not like he he was. He was seen, you know, he was seen, you know, hitting on like this other celebrity or something like that. It was like, I mean, they blur her face and all that stuff. She don't look, she don't look like an attractive woman to me, personally speaking. So I'm like, Connor, if you're really doing some stupid shit, what are you doing, bro? Alcohol was a hell of a drug. Damn, man. Like, I wouldn't, I don't know. I don't think this man is, is that stupid to throw I, away I really his hope money he's not, man. His life, but... Like I said, alcohol, whatever people do, whatever happened. You can't. Con- a lot of people don't have control under the influence. So let's hope for the best and hope that that you know she is uh, looked after too. Because I don't want to take nobody's side. But if a woman, you know, it's a serious allegation. Uh, it's not something that should be taken lightly. I feel like it's some. This is fourth allegation at that. You know what I mean? Like it's not the first time somebody comes at at Connor with this. So that might also tell you on his side that, you know, people are after money sometimes and they're just money grabbing. And, and, you know, from the videos that we saw, I saw one video where he supposedly is holding her hand on the way to the bathroom and mm-hmm. he lets go. And his yeah. security 
clear the path and they go in or whatever. He turns back slightly. The video cuts. The next video I saw that came out two days after that video was at the club. At the same, I think it was same, at the night. same night, but at, the, at, at, a club. at two hours after that supposedly altercation happened. Yeah, and he turned, came up to her, I guess, said hi, and then kept it pushing. So, so what TMZ says here, McGregor was accused of kissing women without her consent, forcing her to perform oral sex. And then attempting to sodomize her during a violent attack inside a restroom following the game four of the NBA Finals on June 9th. Um, so you know those more, those details right there are like, you know, you, you start thinking about it. And not only did did was he was he you know forcing himself on her, but if he says that he was forcing her to perform oral fe- oral sex, it means homeboy whipped it out. Or not? Nah. But then. I saw a tweet that Candace Owen said that she doesn't believe that a woman could elbow Conor McGregor and he's gonna like, like let go or, or knock out or whatever. I forgot what exactly the tweet was, but the girl claimed that she elbowed him. Mm-hmm. To, she, to, she, to she, escape, she threw, she threw them shoulders, bro. To escape, um, she threw against against Cerrone. For Honestly, I like I said, I don't. I would hate to be a man in that situation because fame and wealth comes with that. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's his fourth one. So obviously, yeah, he's either she's pregnant. She's about to have her fourth child. Or is that what you're talking about? Nah, That's fourth true. allegation. Oh, fourth, fourth allegation. allegation. Is what I was he's reading this right now. Also, he, he's expecting his fourth child now. So, and honestly, it just, ah, it just sucks, man. Like, because as a woman... She posted a, a Father's Day thing with them all together in New York. I'm just seeing them right now. Mm. Honestly, Lele, I'm going to be honest with you. Hold on, your brother a, just as, called himself a woman, so as a I'm woman, trying to see. No, no, no. As, <laughs> if you're thinking... Th- yeah, that's crazy, huh? Pause. <laughs> Women should think about, like, you're going into... Because the video is like... You said it again, Loki. The video is like right there, right? Just, I'm just putting myself in her shoes. So you uh, think, like, you're in that... You're, you're going into a men's restroom... And it's like a crowd. Like, why are you putting yourself in this situation? You know what the interesting part of it is too is that as a woman, that's crazy. I did say that. <laughs> you did yeah. say it twice. That's uh, why I was like, hold on, your brother calls himself me. a woman. Excuse I, me. I need to hear this. But what trips me out though too is that okay, TMZ reported this, right? And yeah, TMZ at, at least you have to edit that out. at least <laughs> nah, it's staying there forever. At least TMZ, they're like, it's not that they're not credible or anything. They're just reporting all this stuff. So to yeah. me, it's also like, what if she took this story to TMZ? You know what I mean? She knew that the video was out there. She takes the story to TMZ and, you know, they, they make the, the blow up aspect off of it, you know? But then how many times has TMZ been wrong when they're... Facts. Well, look, when they're right now, stuff. right now... But they're right always going to post the allegations. Yeah, they're, ale- they're always going to be a legend right now. It's not, okay. it's not like they're... And then they have a video of him doing taking her into the bathroom mm-hmm. or whatever that is. But like, especially so once that they part, video, that part, once that they part, have videos like that, they make moves and they. Post yeah, them. that part they have it. They they like. But what I'm trying to say is the fact that they reported it. It's like, how did it get to them? You know what I mean? Remember, was Mr. That, Harvey is a lawyer. Was that was that um video taken from a TMZ person? No, or, she cashed out. Or did she? Yeah, was that she all like out. kind of? Or or her lawyer called and said, "Let me cash out. I'm gonna give you this video I want, but I want this much." Yeah, all that shit. Trust bro. me, that, that's, that's, that's kind of what I think about TMZ. It too, you know what I mean? So, and, and it's interesting, too, because he's it's not just his, uh, a, a rape allegation, too, but um, he's had an incident in Miami before, too. Well, I think it was when he took the phone from the fan and stomped on it. I think it was that, that part, was Miami. And then supposedly he injured the mascot. <laughs> he knocked him out. The, the, but low key, the guy went to the hospital. But at the end of the day, I think that's something that the Miami Heat and they were going to cover because I think they, they wanted that whole gimmick during the halftime or whatever to bring him out and do that shit, like... Like, you know what I mean? They okayed that at the end of the day. So, like, I feel like that, maybe that's not so much included in this, but that was a funny thing to see. And then to find out a couple of days later that he got injured. No, that, that all happened that same day. No, I know, but it's just... It's the just, allegation came after, yeah. It's funny, no, because it, we found out days later that funny, the bro. mascot got injured. Pain, bro. I'm laughing at their pain, bro. Because they made Kevin it a Hart, joke. why'd you start this? Made it a joke out of this, so... And then there's talks about Connor's not even going to fight Chandler no more. Chandler anymore. And our Charles Oliver put a, an emoji like, hmm. You didn't see that? No. 
But um, yeah, so you know, Connor's in a very interesting swing of things. What's, what's about. his reasoning to not wanting to fight Chandler? Because he's three. He's only three in the tough. Not ju- not just that. That's, it's, it's, ju- it's all just that. Not just that. I mean, he, he hasn't that. even submitted. He hasn't even started the whole Usada thing too. And if he wants to at least fight within this year, the time is is taking. If he doesn't start that by the end of this month, it's pretty much a wrap. You know, he's gonna have to wait till next year to fight. And that's another year gone for him, but. And then by then, it's like, is, is Chandler even the opponent? Does Chandler get someone else? You know, what happens there? Um, and, you know, that's, that's what's happening. In Chandler's going to fight of- the next guy that wins between Justin Poirier and um, Gaethje. Is that for the BMF, right? I think he could rematch with any three of those guys, with either those two guys from the BMF tied up their fight Bro, Ch- or, or uh, Oliveira. Let's be honest. The last significant win that Connor's had is in what year? Significant or just win? Significant win. Oh, because last win was Cerrone. Yeah, but that wasn't significant. It was a depleted Cerrone that admitted that he wasn't feeling him, like well that night. That night, but up to that, Cerrone was on a run. No, but he was he? Was he? What's Cerrone? What's, what run was he on? Cerrone on? Before that, after that is when he went up and fought. Uh, he, he, fought he got his ass beat by Tony Ferguson. After that. Yeah, but before that, before that he he was Remember he was, I was, saying he was, he was a gatekeeper going, before that. Before that, I think the the guy that he got to fight afterwards was Gage, and Gage he fucked him up too. But yeah, I wouldn't say that was his notable win at all. His last notable win was when he bought, beat mm-hmm. Eddie Alvarez in 2016. 2015. 2015, I think, is when he beat when he became or 2016, one of those two years when he became. Double yeah, because 17 was when he lost to Floyd Nate. No, he, he becomes the, the, the champ champ after fighting Nate twice. Then he fights Floyd, then he takes his hiatus, and then it's then it comes then back to Khabib, Khabib, fights against... So that's what I'm saying. Know? Like This guy is a great champion at the time that he was a champion, but I personally think that the reason why he's not in the pool to take that is because, bro, it looks like he's swollen roids. Um... Yeah, and, and he needs he, six months of clean testing. He's probably just enjoying that body build that he's got now. Because I was watching a video of how, like, after the injury, when he broke his leg and they did the the the, he's riding a bike and how how he had this right here now, the the. He was so skinny that you could see the line. I forgot what they called it. It's like an actual name that they have, and then they started bringing saying how he started swelling up. Two months after that, it's the first swell up. Then they say that he did something with his hair because he had his hairline was going receding, and they were saying that obviously steroids causes hair, hair loss. loss. Then he he goes shaves his hair. He he reappears a few months after um shaved head right, and then a few months after that, remember those images that we saw that was Conor McGregor and we didn't believe it's Conor McGregor when he was just so yoked up. You don't remember those images? Where it was like, yo, this is not Connor. It was like this one side profile from the bottom. And it was like, yo. And he was like this, just like. And it's just showing, the guy's talking, in the whole video, it's like a 14-minute video. It's talking about the progression of how he's looked and, and everything. Yeah, he sent that video. I'm and I did send it to you guys, right? Uh-huh. I personally, I didn't even finish even watching it. But just watching, I went maybe 10 minutes into it. I was like four minutes away. But bro, it's just like, you got to be on something. And... You break a leg the way you break it. I don't know, bro. Yeah, yeah. It's, Alcohol it's, too does that to you too. They were saying because he's turned orange almost. It's not even white. It's like yeah. I mean, honestly, that's why even I mean, me and Byron yeah. be hitting the gym. I know Manny be hitting the gym too, and it's it's so like that, so that there's, cavallo, a, there's a lot of times that like I'm being honest with you. After long, it's like his face. He does like it doesn't even look the same. After yeah. after a long week or a long day, I like to have a drink. But it's like man, if I'm going to the gym and all that, you're depleting your gains a lot by by. Uh, yep, alcohol, by alcohol kills your pr- your protein. You know what I mean? So it's like uh, that's why. Yeah, I can see why that's a big. But then thing. I see guys like. The Rock and I know he drinks. You can tell he he loves alcohol, bro. Yeah, but he's on roids, bro. So that's what I'm saying. But he still works <laughs> works out every day. So it's like I feel like it's the balance. I don't think. But I, I just feel think... like when when you add that into you competing in MMA, like your body, like for example, like when you see his Connor... leg breaking, it could have been also because of the years prior to that. He was not taking care of himself all the way like that. True, but I I, I think because like, even even in the Khabib, you see one, Connor in Mon- Monaco, you see him back over here in Miami. Like the way he travels, bro. He where's he got room to really train like that, bro? 
he's not to me he doesn't have the the the, the drive that a Floyd has that you can still find Floyd running around Vegas with an SUV following him around. You know what I'm saying? And then when you see him fight on an exhibition fight, he still looks all right, decent. You're almost for his age. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So Connor is ha- not even there, and and it's just like. Yeah, and and the thing is too is like he should retire in my opinion. That's I don't want to get to that point, but I feel like yes, you should. He should. I don't think who in the top five of that of his he division in my can he be? In my opinion, he doesn't have the motivation to fight anymore. There's no reason for him to fight anymore. When he was coming up, there was a reason he wanted to get the money. He needed to you know find security. All right, you, now you have all that money. Now you have all that security. Now he has his uh, his whiskey brand. He, li- he he sold he, that already, he, bro. He sold that. Yeah, but he's still he's, li- that's still, he's the face of it, definitely. He's so the face he's, of he's it. He's employed by them. They're giving him a check, but he sold his his majority. No, stake he in sold that. he sold it. I know that he did. But even that, it's like that left him a chunk of money, bro. It's kind of like, bro, why are you doing this? There's no need for him to do that anymore. And, he, and he's explained why he's still doing it, but to, when you see. The fact that you you don't see him performing as much as you want to. I mean, the the the, the Conor McGregor documentary kind of explained that he's been pushing to fight more and all this, but now now I think talking, Chandler's a good a good opponent opponent to really see if that's it. If he still got it, yeah. Even Oliveira, bro. Um, Oliveira, know, we, yeah, we, because I think he can knock him, him out. We, we got to see him already. <laughs> I against, definitely think against he can knock him out. Sorry, already, but you know, we saw that <laughs> twice already. You know. Um, Unfortunately, he broke his leg in that second time or third time, if you can, the first five years ago. Um, and then to wrap it up, even with uh, with Gagey, it'd be an interesting fight. It's just like, is his body gonna 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 withstand that? Is he gonna withstand that? You know, to 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 go at it. And we saw that with the Dustin fight, he was compromised already going into that fight. And then um, you know, you get that result. Um, the, the crazy thing about it is, even though you know. He's not in the sport the way he used to be and, you know, dominating that aspect. The UFC is still like a... Because I was just seeing some fights that they're putting out that they're about to be putting on late, later this year. And it's just like, man, it's still crazy how, like, they still have a lot of uh, quality and quantity to, that, where that comes from as far as fighters go. But just the persona and, and the electricity that that guy can, can produce off of a fight... Uh, it's hard to oh, get that. It's very, very hard to he, get that. Obviously, of one he has. Person, you know what I mean? He has a fan That's base. That's the hard thing. Yes, he has the. There's fan also base. people that now want to see him lose. I, I yeah. would say like the one person that has that that's like right there right now is Izzy. That you're excited to see him fight. You know what I mean? Especially this last one. Not casual. Off, off of him. Off of not him. Not casual. Not yeah. Not he. Did, he still. He's that's what I'm saying. He's like the next one that Connor's could. the only one that gets a casual. Be like, oh shit, Connor's fighting this week. I want to watch that fight. Yeah, I think that Izzy's the only one that that probably could get it to that level. But I don't know how he would do it. You know. I think he's already tried to push the boundaries of of of, of who he is and put that on front street. You know, and it's still not a. It's not appealing enough, bro. And it's almost like, you, I don't want to say it, bro, but it's almost like the fact that you had a, a white boy doing what he was doing at the time that he was doing it, That's that was a big thing, bro. Uh, he was the great white hope. In a, he was a great white hope in a I, sense. I think that what I, what I, the reason I compare Izzy to that is just his dominance inside the octagon. Not really like his persona out because Connor's persona out was but, his, his but, shit talking too. But yes, I'm saying, but and, that's and for me, gets, is when you shit talk like that, people want to see you lose too. Is he shit talking to me? Sometimes this isn't to that level. And, and that's what I'm saying. He's, and he's trying to do it. He's trying to push that envelope and try to seem like the guy that's going to sh- talk shit. And, but that's, that's what I'm saying. Besides it, that, it I don't... There's no one else in the UFC that, that even gives me that like hint. I don't know about you guys. Well, there's no good trash talkers anymore. The UFC hasn't had good trash talkers in a while. I no, mean, we just we lost another. Like, I mean, Nick is no longer there. True. Uh, no longer Masvidal. They were they were decent at shit talking. That's true. Decent. They're both they're both cunts. decent. Fucking those are the top of the guys right there with the shit talking in the UFC to me. Nate and and Masvidal for sure. That's what I'm saying. That was a dream fight that happened. That that was that was such a dope. I think they should have ran that back. But Especially those, that those had, guys are gone. No, yeah, but they should have ran that back. Those guys are gone now. So that's what I'm saying is you have the guys that were trash talking are no longer there. 
Um, so it's like, where's that trash talk? Where's that guy? You know, like there's guys that have tried it. Like, for example, in Kevin Holland, where he I, doesn't, I, he, he can't back it up. though. I, like, that's what I'm saying. So he can't back it up. But he tried it for like two fights where people got excited about him. No, but Kevin but Holland had a streak away. during during COVID. That's why. That's and, what I'm saying. But he's just not technical enough. People, people, he got people excited for a little bit, thinking like, "Oh, this might be something," and then he died out. But then again, that wasn't. He wasn't getting casuals excited. He was getting the regular UFC viewer that watched it every week excited because it was like, "Oh shit, this guy's on a crazy week." He was like almost like Makachev kept doing. Here's, I mean, here's the thing. That, though, no, what's if, that fool's name? If, the Hammer. If he if he was able to back it up, he would have gotten the casual excited. No, uh, not enough. If he would have been able to back it up? To win? Who is he supposed to win? Like, we'll beat that one guy that he lost, the Asian guy? A lot of guys, bro. He lost nah. to Vittori. He lost to Brunson. Like, there's a lot and of those guys Those guys that... are no, unknown enough to be like, oh, shit. But still, those are like the stepping stones for you to like mm-hmm. be able to get to those. Like, he, was always, calling casuals, out, nah. he was always calling out Izzy. And I'm like, bro, you can't even beat right. the guys that he Why? does. I'll Why? give you one that's getting casuals. Sean O'Malley. I would say so. You know why? Because he, he messes with the uh, entertainment. The Nelk Business. Boys and them and all the that. YouTuber and that bring thing in his podcast. And then a YouTuber, and right. So he's 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 plugged into the Matrix in the sense that he's using it to his advantage. He's not. Nah, you're right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's mm-hmm. he's like, oh, I'm going to well, use you guys all this wanted sh- an example. So no, that's a great example. example. Great example, bro. Great, great example. example. But I was going to bring back Connor and why he's 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 good with the casuals. Because this motherfucker was always talking shit and then bringing a boxer, talking shit about what he can do in boxing and this, this, and that. And when you start going into that realm, he's the only UFC fighter at that time that was talking like that. You know, yeah, and then and he it's started... tough because I just don't see... I, like, I don't know if the UFC is ever going to allow that again, man. That's, and and that's it was because... Part. I mean, he, but he his his mouth sold him, sold him into that fight. Mm-hmm. Because he wasn't supposed to be... But, but here's the thing, though. He can back it up. If he would have won it, I could agree with you in that. But nah, he hasn't but did won he get a, knocked out? Yeah, bro. They called the fight a technical knockout. They, the, the ref stopped it. Who's... Connor and Mayweather, the ref stopped the fight. Oh yeah, I show some bullshit. And we think that he should have kept going, but the ref. You, and then that goes back into the whole politics yeah, I, I of boxing think, and I bullshit. Think you like you should have, they should have let Connor hit the canvas for sure. That's what I'm saying. But he wasn't. To me, he wasn't. It was a TKO. It was a fucking whack ass part. But yeah, you know what I mean? So we'll see what happens. Because I'm like, he didn't but, go night night. But maybe so. Dan, Dana didn't want that to happen because he didn't want his UFC fight, um, fighter to get hit the canvas because that would hurt the brand. I of the USC hit the campus. Uh but right now we have a it's let kinda the within the sports the world, but it's also the within the this whole uh, this other the spectrum of um uh I don't know, it's, it's a very he could say touchy subject in a sense. What you want to talk about? But um we're we're in the middle of 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 two two things this month. One is getting more publicity than the other. So we got Pride Month. And we also have Men's Mental Health Month. A lot of people don't know that, that that's even exists in June. But we have Pride Month going They're on. They're both new, bro. No, nah, but Pride Month has been really relevant even before COVID, I would say. Yeah, but they're still both new. A lot more. But let me make this point to you, though. Do you see any of these companies saying anything about men's mental health? But you'll see all of them changing their logo to have... The rainbow, right? This year, not as much as last year. Uh, but I'm still seeing it. My point is that we have a no, very... You just w- ask me and I'm just answering. My, but my point to, to wrap this up is, or to connect it all, as we say, is what the Dodgers did on Friday night. Okay. And when, when and they honored... They, the, had the, they honored the Sisters of Perpetual Intel- Indulgence. Um, and it, it's interesting because I'm seeing the details about all this and it's like they've gotten so much backlash from that. And I, I feel like the reason they did that was because it's Pride Month. And I feel sure. like you could, you could honor another group that's not offending another group, if you will. Well, to me, I, have you seen the videos of these? Yeah, it's have, all you, have you seen it? Mm-hmm. Have you seen them, Byron? Of the protest? No, the videos of, of, these, of this group, the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. No, I haven't. So they're, they're, uh, they, they dress up as nuns. Uh-huh. They paint their faces white, and there's one skit or whatever you could say they have of where there's a man on a cross basically strip on Jesus, bro. Jesus, and there's a man stripping on him. You know Didn't what I mean? They do something like that in Brazil or something like that. 
Pretty sure that's where it comes from. You know what I mean? But the whole thing is they're they're mocking Christianity and Catholicism and the whole that whole religion and all that. And the Dodgers uh, honored them on on Friday at the game. Right. And there's been so much controversy leading up to it. There was uh, a lot of, uh, from what I've seen and heard, is that, a, that the stadium was pretty empty for that game. And there's a lot of protests outside. And yeah. another thing was that I feel like this is also a very cowardly thing. The Dodgers uh, organization honored them an hour plus before the first pitch. Meaning they didn't want, when people did start to show up or when they thought that, more fans were going to show up closer to, to the, you know, the first pitch being thrown. Uh, they wanted to avoid all that, so they honored them hours before. Um, it, it's just so interesting how all because that's going the stadium, through. Because the stadium did get packed, but it was once the game was on. Mm -hmm. So, oh, okay. so they, they avoided So basically, they had them in there, and then they took them out before anybody can assault them. Mm. Does that make sense? I mean, there was a protest on the outside, so mm -hmm. yeah. that's what I saw. Yeah, so they were trying to avoid anybody getting assaulted. So this is the, the tenth other annual is, Pride Night at Dodger Stadium. See, I don't, think, I don't annual, think the Christian pretty, base is gonna assault them. You never know that, bro. I doubt it, because then that would go against what they're they're preaching too. Yeah, I don't think that it was. I, I just feel I like they, it was didn't just wanna, they, they didn't want to have them rub elbows or them see that because if you do that, they probably walk, turn around and walk away. Yeah, like that's that, my I, more I think what it was, would happen. I, you know but I mean? assault, I just don't feel that. Somebody that's uh, that's gonna come in with that bandan that that uh that that flag you might that have to I'm, use your words. Who's to say? I mean this this thing this same similar just, situation happened a couple weeks ago at, at Santa like Elementary, and there was there was a parent outside that was representing the Christian community, and she was talking about how you know how about they're not they're not spreading hatred towards uh, the LGBTQ right you saw people, that people. Yeah. yeah you know what I mean. So in that aspect, you know that that's that's where I feel like Enzo's uh, argument is coming out of. Um, but I do believe that it just be backlash. You know what I mean? Um, an well, assault, they, an they assault of booze for they, sure. They, and you don't know, man. People might, be, you they know, offended uh, Kershaw. They they had to apologize to Kershaw. Why? Because Kershaw's Christian. Mm. There's a couple of pictures and other. Players I, that I, are I, there. I saw some pictures write letters. They wrote letters to the public about how it went against their faith and all this. I think it was a picture. And this is the crazy part is that the Dodgers are honoring them to be a community hero. That's the, that to me is like the vocabulary. And all, like again, I feel like there's other groups, there's other people that you can honor in, these, in this 10th annual Pride Night. You know what I mean? You don't have to go after, again, a group of people that's mocking and attacking Openly, you know, I mean, a uh, 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 group of people in our religion, and uh, that, that's that's again was the crazy part to me. So, question is, hot question: Would you still root for the Dodgers after they're doing things like this? I mean, for me per personally, yes, because at the end of the day, I'm, I'm I like them for more of the sport. All this stuff is again is why I brought up how companies are are, are doing it. So I feel like. Appease. appease all mm -hmm. these things, you know what I mean? The, one thing or that the Dodgers are doing companies trying to be too politically correct. Exactly. Nah, it's, it's part of that. It's, it's part, part of that. It's part of keeping the masses happy. I mean, that's the whole point of like diversity hires. I mean, something they're doing to appease the the Christian community and all that is to have a, a faith and fellowship night, and it's all about. You know, basically a Christian community. Didn't night they do at that Dodger the next, Stadium. like, following week after that? They're doing it in sometime in July, I believe. Mm. You know, so that's what they're doing to appease that group of people now. You know what I mean? They are appeasing the Salvadorians by having a Salvadorian night August thirtieth. See you there. So uh, is that going back to the question? Can I ask? It? Can I? I'm gonna just be who? frank. Is that going back to the question of being inclusive? Again, for me personally, I have no problem with the inclusivity with them honoring. Anybody on their pride you night? Just, I just you don't just like. Think they could have picked another a person, way better person that's in or the pride group. community. Yes, instead of the sisters of indulgence. Yes, have they ever honored? Oh, what's the right name? Caitlyn Jenner. I don't I'm know. I'm sure they have. But my point is, like, that's a pretty excellent figure. You know, for me, in my opinion, if you're gonna, if you want to look for someone in that community, you know what I mean. Interesting. 
I mean, th- there's another one. What, what's that other? That other? There's another uh, person that uh, sh- they were accusing her of of being with Kanye at some point. Being with Kanye. Yeah, she. I think it's also a transvestite person. Oh, you're talking about the the dude with the pink hair. Yeah. Uh, See, one thing I like about Jeffrey that guy, something, right? Jeffrey yeah, Star. Yeah, yeah. One thing I like about that guy is like how he talks about how how much they, how much this group, this group, and the agenda is pushing it on the masses, mm-hmm. and how he's not okay with it. Mm-hmm. You know, so so that part of things is 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 uh, is, is another like I don't again I don't know too much about that person exactly. Mm-hmm. I'm just throwing out an example. Yeah. But again, there's a lot of other groups if, and people that I feel like they could have chosen to to honor. Yeah. And to and to label a community hero. Well, it's because when you're talking about inclusivity, you're talking about, you know, inclusivity within other, other groups. Um, I mean, it sucks that it has to go to that, that extreme on both ends of the pendulum because, there you know, there's extremes. But, yeah, I mean, yes, there could have been another one that they could have chosen in order to represent them in a better way. Yeah, and, and kind of, a, like you said, they're... they're their apology to Clint Carshaw is what I mentioned, where the Dodgers will hold a family, a faith and family day. Yeah, like I know? said, because they offended their own player. Yeah, and that's scheduled for July 30th against the Cincinnati Reds. Uh, so, yeah, th- that to me was very, uh, it was, again, I feel like it's a touchy subject, and I just feel like they could have chosen a better group of people to honor, mm-hmm. you know. Because that, that group wasn't, I feel, like the best one to go with. Exactly. Um, that was an interesting fact that I saw today that kind of mentioning the other side of June, which is Men's Mental Health Month, is how they were, they, this, this uh, article was talking about how loneliness doesn't only affect your mental health, it also affects your bones, especially as men. Your bones. How does that work? I don't know, bro. Your heart aches, so then your ribs start to hurt. I don't know. Tell me, bro. Loneliness, you said? Yeah, loneliness of all things. I mean, unless you want to talk about the fact that, like, uh, when you're feeling lonely, what you're doing is advancing aging. I mean, unless that's what you're referring to, that it's advancing your aging stage. So that's why it might cause your bones to hurt, because you're aging in the process by doing that. Um, The other thing, too, is... Because uh, loneliness, it can be a state of mind, but it can also be like a physical thing at the same time. That's why hugs and physical touch are very important. Yeah, and kind of um, you you mentioned aging, age something that ages you too is stress. Mm-hmm. So right here, this the article is talking about psych, psychosocial stress, and and that isolating yourself socially can affect that. Your, your mental health and, and and thus affecting your bones. Interesting. You know what I mean? You know, I don't know. I feel like sometimes a little bit of isolation is good, but I think it's all a balance. Y'all know when to isolate and when to cry no, out. No, but you... there's a difference between isolating to just take a break and someone isolating just because... Sometimes there are things or behaviors that cause isolation. So I'll throw one out there, right? So someone is watching like a lot of pornography. A lot of pornography will cause isolation. There's correlation in that where there's a lot of guys that if they consume it at a very high rate, they would rather consume that than talk to a female. They would rather consume that than take responsibility in something they need to do. So there's also behaviors that can lead to that type of isolation. And then that isolation then leads you to loneliness. And then you're wondering, like, why is this happening? Yeah, um, right there you mentioned a couple of things. And then you sent this earlier, Enzo, that I think it's very, very kind of relevant to what we're talking about right now. You sent this post where it says, men want sex, women want attention. This is why porn ruins men and social media ruins women. These technologies satisfy our primal urges and don't satisfy our souls. Mm-hmm. Word up. Word there up. was a pastor who was saying, and I loved his analogy, 
where he said, uh, watching porn is like sniffing something you want to eat, but you never will. That's very true. And I was like, damn. And it creates this false sense of reality. Um, oh, you definitely. know what I mean? So uh, I feel like a lot of, uh, a lot of men... Well, well, boys better said too, you know, will watch that early on and then they get their first experience with a woman and will do certain things, especially with a woman that's never has had sex before or anything like that. And they do things that, or they try things that, you know, that they've, they, seen. That they've seen done and, the, you know, also the girl probably has never been exposed to. Some girls might have because they might have been exposed to porn or some others say, might not about, have been I was about to say, so I'll, some some of us even going to the point of like sending them, oh, look, watch this. Or like, <laughs> and then you put them on on some shit where it's like, you don't know what doors you're opening on them because women deal with pornography too. Not at the rate as much as a man does, but they still have urges and they satisfy them sometimes by watching porn. So I don't know. I feel like porn is definitely something that it can keep you stuck and, and, and unproductive, you know? Mm -hmm. And it also takes a lot of your life force. So if you're depleting yourself by watching porn and then it's you're not gonna be at your full potential because you're 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 literally shooting 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 your life out. You know what I mean? Like but have you guys heard of Courtney Tiller? No, who's that? No idea. So Elaborate. she's a, she's a uh, Christian porn star. And I, she, I don't know if you guys have seen this post or this uh, quote she said, where she said, God put me on earth to enjoy sexual pleasure. So I, I, would, I would only agree partially. Man, he's cooking right now. I would only agree part. <laughs> I would only agree in a sense of like, yes, he made, he made us man and female uh, able to experience that and, 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 and indulge in that only, but it's only in a sanctified covenant between a man and a woman. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you're not, because, you know, I feel like it's, a lot of us fornicate at a young age. A lot of us do Here, stuff that, here's you know. The, here's the thing I would say. It's like guilty God. pleasures and shit. It's, there's the thing I would say to it. I can't wait to read you her quote. Um, another one she has? Bro, you want me to read it? I'll just say it. She says, God's message has been abundantly clear. I'm here to be a porn star. This is my way of serving. Whoa. And then she said God put her on help put her on hell, on earth to help liberate other women from their sexual shame, saying that her f she feels more connected to her faith since she kickstarted her kinky career seven years ago. All right, Manny. You see, but then Manny, before you go, let, let me just say this. I feel like somebody like that is you're going to church to go to church to feel good because you, you feel like going to church is gonna make you feel good for what you're doing. But when something that I really got, I've really started to really analyze about what a church should do is preach repentance. And if it's not re preaching that, it's probably not the church where you're going to grow and flourish as a human being. Yeah, I've told you that before. I've told you that before, that a lot of churches cater their message to have a certain amount of viewers, a certain amount of participants. Because when you cater, that's when you get more money. That's when you get more things because you're aligning the message in order to care cater for a lot of people um when it comes to her I, I don't know how that woman grew up or what was her perspective of sex her words are very interesting she said liberating women from feeling guilty that Takes is shame, yeah. that is a very interesting phrase to me the reason being is that some places depending on who teaches you scripture and who teaches you the word a lot of people are taught about sex from a shame perspective. Like, oh, like you shouldn't do that, right? So like they're shamed about it. So they, they view sex as a shameful thing. When sex is not a shameful thing, God called it good. However, he put parameters of how, you know, like who should it be enjoyed with? Even in Proverbs, it, it, I, I love the book of Proverbs a lot. In the book of Proverbs, when you're reading it, the first nine chapters are a father giving his instructions to his son of how to conduct himself and said, son, how to carry himself. And you're a woman of your youth, right? Yes, you're talking about chapter five. And chapter five, in, in, where you're bringing that up, it also says this. He says, why go through the streets 
squandering the fountain of your life, right? Meaning just, you know, jizzing everywhere. Like, why are you doing that, you know? And it, and it tells you how that type of woman, right, the woman that's promiscuous will reduce you to a loaf of bread. I've always found that phrasing very interesting of why would a father say that to his son, right? That a, promic a promiscuous woman will reduce you to a loaf of bread. And you begin to think, what are those type of women that are like that? That reduce a man to that? Meaning that that woman will like basically cost you all your funds until you have nothing. So it's like, be wise of who you're choosing. Be wise of who you're letting in. Be, how are you guarding your heart? And also through those chapters, the interesting thing is that f f wisdom is personified as a female when you're reading the chapters. And she, wisdom, she, and, she. And wisdom is, is saying like, hey, I'm looking for you. I'm trying to help you. So when I hear that from this woman, I hear a that she was taught from a position of shame and not to understand, like, yes, you're supposed to have pleasure. It's not saying, no, don't have pleasure. But it's also, there's a construct. It's within a marriage. There's within a set of rules, you know. But, like I said, it, if you're taught from a place of shame, eventually you're going to feel like, I need to break this shame. So it all, it all goes down to, like, how were you th taught of that perspective? True. I've talked too much. All right. No, it's very He's true, talked. bro. I feel like, I don't know, I've had a, I know people that are in the industry and I've also seen them post going to church on a Sunday. Oh, I've regularly, seen Regularly. And I, I, I've I seen personally that. feel like, you know, everybody has their time to grow and, and when it's going to happen. But it's also like, don't go out there preaching that type of BS. And, you know, what she's saying that God put her here to serve in that way and all that, like... I mean, yes, because what are you serving? The downfall of other married men by viewing you? How is that serving? Or the even, downfall, or even, or even the downfall young men of younger, see. younger men? Like, how is that serving? Like, it's just like the words she chooses. It's like, how are you serving? You might be giving pleasure to another person. I, you know, because they view you, you, you're beautiful, whatever. Uh, and you might, that person might see you and get some pleasure out of it, but it, it's a temporary pleasure. But how is it serving that person? How is it building them? The word, the words to serve means that you're helping that person. You're building them. You know, it's like, for example, if, if you want to take the, the context of, of uh, uh, you know, you go to a restaurant, you have a waiter, a waiter is serving you. They're giving you a service, but that service is convenient to you, which is they come to you, they give you your food, right? Your food is something that sustains you. Same thing if, like, someone wants to help you, right? Like, um, my father taught me, hey, like, when you enter somewhere, you see someone, like, help and then at that moment those acts of service that's helping that person and for me like you know if you, you know maury knows me on this like when i see someone like okay they need help i'm like okay like let me go help them you know and those are moments where you see acts of service so in my head it's kind of like okay you're saying you're serving but it's like, how, how are you serving when what you're doing is contrary to even what the scripture says? If you just look at Leviticus 19 and just look at the passage and how God says, you shall be holy as I am holy. And then he goes into describing how you shouldn't uncover the nakedness. He says... You shouldn't uncover the nakedness of your mother. You shouldn't uncover the nakedness of your sister. You shouldn't uncover the nakedness of your neighbor's wife. Yeah, you shouldn't see and, that. And it, because what does it do to you? 
That's what I was gonna say to like kind of interjecting into what you're saying. How you're giving, you're actually making a disservice because as a young man and being afflicted by porn addiction, uh, I saw how when I saw started watching that as a young man, you you start it corrupts your mind. It corrupts your mind, yeah. and then you start wanting to do these things. And then when I was young, the whole thing of of kids having kids was going around. It, that's kind of slowed down for this, these generations. A lot of kids aren't, you know, they're still having sex. Maybe, I don't it's think not- it's slowed down, to be honest, Enzo. I think it's slowed down with the kids that are in their 20s. I don't think it's slowed down with the kids that are in high school, though. I don't see a lot of kids having kids like I used to, though. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like, oh, you had, you know a 15-year-old that but had a... But how many high schoolers do you know? I know a few. Bro, I can't hear, bro. I know a few. I know, like, I've seen the stages. It's If, if anything, now I feel like everybody's more afraid of going into that realm. You know what I'm saying? Of having sex, like, and it's like more of a timidness. Like, you don't see men move in the aspect that I was moving, that was so promiscuous and so like perverted. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like, it's just changed. Like, and it's almost like a late bloom thing. I would say where I see men coming catching it later than when I was like, bro, I was watching porn at 12, 11, 13. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. What I will say though is that when I was in high school. Is when Snapchat came around, bro. And Snapchat that, was and, created and, for that, and that created a whole created another, for what? But that's what Snapchat. A whole another like Snapchat was window meant, to was that. created yes, but, for right, sexting. So, so, so you're the last one to graduate out of out of us. Was there how, how many pregnant kids did you know in high school? In my high school, personally, not many, but in other high schools, plenty. Plenty in other high school. Plenty in other high school. And in my high school, in my high school, I can name maybe two or three that I by, by senior year they had a kid. Okay, bite on in Madison Middle School. Did we not see girls pregnant? Yeah, that's I saw, I, thirteen, I, I twelve. Saw that when I was at here's a, here's school. the difference. I saw eighth you know graders that were pregnant. That's crazy, right? No, no. Here's the difference. You just pointed out something very interesting, which is the geographical location, though. Demographics for sure. This guy went to a school right here, close in, Tar- in Encino, right? Mm-hmm. What's a magnet school? Yeah, school. yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you're talking about a school that's a no ho, right? That demographics matter, uh, right? But uh, it's they, also a majority. It's teen, now 50 50 Armenian, Armenian, and Hispanic. So yeah. the Hispanic population was the one fucking and shit, right? Let's say. And because teen pregnancy, low kids been like that, bro. You look at all our, and, our grandparents; they had like ten kids, bro. Right, but now I feel like the teen pregnancy rate, in a sense, has dropped. In this, because just now, look, it's like people can abort. People Google can, this, bro. Just Google this. Bro. I don't know. Like, let's clear it up. Let's clear it up, bro. Google it. What am I googling exactly? Like, but, but has teen pregnancy died down? But in but that's one of the dangers. That's one of the dangers of watching pornography is that you want to explore these things, but that's mm. a repercussion of watching porn when yeah. you watch and then you want to explore se- your sexuality at such a young age that you can't take care of yourself and then you end up having sex and then you end up having a kid and then it's like, mm. damn. I would say put the, the teen pregnancies in the 2005 and up to 2000 and... Compare, just a yeah. comparison is what he's telling you. Because... Like, what's the comparison of pregnancies, teen pregnancies back then, and teen pregnancies today? Has it dipped, or has is it still the same? Is it still the same? Right, it's a big question because I don't think it's as high as it used to be. That's mm-hmm. my thing. But could that could that be also a correlation to to men now just watching porn and indulging so, in that? From what it's saying here, is there's been a thirty year decline. Oh wow, thirty year decline. So, so it's, this one's starting from nineteen ninety two to two thousand. There's a twenty percent drop. For, from 2000 to 2010, a 28 percent drop. But look, from 2010 to 2020, a 50 percent drop. So it's been dropping a little by. That's little. why it says a 30 that, year decline. Would that be also something like the confusion that they're putting in with like the sisters of indulgence and things like all that? that stuff, I would say all, I would say all that stuff wrapped into one. It's like he's saying, the contraceptives. Right. I mean, think right, about right, it. Right, think right, about right. it. Once we Abortions. went into high school and all that. How 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 much the how thing. much they emphasize all that like Wait, safe sex by the all time that type I was of shit like before that bro like it wasn't a big thing it was like that's why like also I don't know if, it, if this is connected to but like HIV and AIDS type because people weren't having safe sex you know what I mean right 
So, you know, well, you, I mean, you, condoms didn't come about to the 80s. You know, exactly. So you start pushing that more contraceptives. Here's the other time. thing. You said abortion. I, I, I'm pretty sure. I don't know. Probably Maury had this. But when I was graduating, they started giving to those, give those out for free on the nurse. Yeah, yeah for bro. sure. You could the go nurse could get, give you some. You yeah. ask for some. And then some teachers would be like, if you have, if you, if you show me that you went to go ask for some, I'll give you um, extra credit. <laughs> Imagine that, bro. English mm-hmm. teachers, math teachers, like female teachers would say, <laughs> if if you're having sex and you and and then you went to go get a package from the nurse, you'll get extra. I feel like credit. now that's that's probably illegal now. Because there's a teacher yeah. that probably went home, a kid went home. My 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 teacher said I get. Um, nah, how's it illegal when some schools now you don't have to tell them your your, your what you choose as a gender and they can't tell your parents. No, I know, but they probably made it a thing where it's like you can't you can't give someone extra credit based off of this. It's like they have to do something academic. You know what I mean? So you know, la próxima, uh, la próxima. but you know that that like you said, all that wrapped into into one. Um, it's Plus just the incel number has gone up too. The what? Uh, number of incels, like uh, basically guys that are still virgins, but not by choice, but because they can't get them. Because they can't get them. Yeah. It ain't no fun if the homies can't have none. That's funny, bro. Yeah, yeah, man. It's all connected, brother. It's all connected. It's all connected. There's one more thing that I want to talk about with you guys that is kind of on a lighter note, but it was pretty interesting to me because I think it's it's just uh, it's interesting. You know, so we just watched The Flash, right? Oh yeah. Um, and I'm just bringing that up because Hold on, can I, can I, can it has I, to do with um, superhero movies. What you guys What you guys think about it? Trash. What? I liked it. You did not say that on Thursday, bro. I you liked gave it. it. An 8.5. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. Hell no, I didn't. Mauricio, did he not give it an 8.5? We were walking out the thing. I said I gave it an 8. And you said 8.5. No. I said a solid 9. What'd you give it then? I did not rate that movie that night, sir. You lying sack of crap. Uh-uh. I don't know, but I like that movie. I like, that, that movie, movie was, was great. What did you like opinion. about it, bro? Uh, all right. I think it's because it's my feelings towards the actor. Uh, and the stuff that's oh. just been going through. Yeah. You can't judge the, the art. Film. You got you gotta judge the act, the, the artist. So in that case, I think he did a good flash. In that case, that's why I'm looking at that way. I'm not I'm not judging the artist. I'm judging the art. All the right. Art so did. I was but, thinking about that throughout it, the movie. Though. Yeah, same here. I was thinking I about was the same thinking, thing. Like that's one aspect I didn't like about it. Like, why would they allow this movie to be released with all the chaos it's going through? Because uh, alleged. Um, <laughs> the other thing is. I don't know. I just, I didn't really love the film. I didn't think the story was like. So I just dragged me out the house to go watch it. Stupid. The story (laughs) was very simple. Like it's not, it's not a complicated story. I don't feel like the writing was great. Really? That's just me. Yeah. Really? Like I like the the comedic relief was good. That's what I thought was great. They're like there's comedic relief which was decent, but when I'm talking about the actual story. Like, that story's been done so many times. The time travel story has been done so many times. The, mul- the multi-universe type of thing, it's been done multiple times, you know? So it's like, how can you... Like, if that's you're, just, if you're going to go down DC's that route... That's just interpretation of that route. However, though, here's my, here's my perspective. If you're going to go down that route... You got to add something to it? How are you going to make it better than the last person that did it? How are you like the way I thought that was in Marvel did that a few years ago? Like, how are you gonna top theirs, bro? Like, that's my whole thing with it. However, this is where I will give you by that it, bringing it was dope. Michael Keegan back. That's they give you the nostalgia. That's what I that's the, the way Batman that, and nostalgia. That was the greatest. that's that's where they get you. That's why there was fans there that were from the 90s, right? That went to just watch it for that because they're giving you that nostalgia. So if you want to talk about nostalgia, uh, yes, the movie has that nostalgia that pulls you in. But is it a great movie? Be honest, overall? bro. You didn't like the feminist, side, the feminist side of having Supergirl in there. Just, just be honest, bro. I didn't even care about that. You're to lying, be honest. bro. I Honestly, I was fine with it. You know why I was fine with it, bro? Why? Because she couldn't do what Superman did, bro. Which was <laughs> defeat Zod, bro. Yo, so. you wild. <laughs> you good? wild. Don't send a woman to do a man's job. Uh, Woo. I'm sorry. I'm you sorry. Wild. I'm sorry. No, no, no. You wild. Bro, but like, bro, he tries to go back and like and fix that all the time and she dies every time. She fails every time. 
So oh, that, because that, that's Superman, basically the writers throwing that out there that don't send a woman, a woman to do a man's job. I, I mean, low key, bro. That's what I got out of Kalal it. Kalal died, right? In that universe, Kalal died. Yeah, which so was Superman, Superman dies. So yeah. then that line, they kill him as a baby. Boy, that's don't her send cousin. the baby to do a man's job. Then nah, as the cousin, the, so. I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm just, just saying. I'm just women, right? And, and like, as much as, I said I as much as the episode. younger Flash tried to go back and fix that shit, he couldn't, bro. He just fucked it up more and more. That was the whole point of the movie. But, um, spoiler uh, alert. That was yeah. not the whole point of the movie. The whole point of the movie, bro, was that spoiler he was alert. trying to save his family, bro. His mom. His Latina mom, bro. You see, you see, you see what I liked about, about that? That had him dancing, bro, the salsa, that, bro. That movie had, what I like about movies, what, and a lot of movies don't have this, where you feel a lot of mixed emotions throughout the whole movie. And that's what I feel like a lot of movies are missing now. So that's why I like bro, the writer. that movie did not move my heart, bro. Maybe, be, like, I, 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 maybe because, I don't know, I don't know, bro. The fact that I'm a father now, you, you, your heart moves in different ways now, bro. And maybe when you become, I don't know, bro, I have a mom and it moved me a little bit. You feel me? <laughs> so I don't saying, know. It, didn't move me a it moved bit. me in, in so many. That's what I'm saying. Like it moved me in so many aspects because it was like, damn, if I could, like, I saw myself with the 18. I always do movies where I put myself in the, in the situation, right? And yeah, I wish I could go back in time and run fast and go back and do things that I and I can't, right? So it's like, but that was one thing that I liked about the movie. It gave you some quotables where he's like, yeah, sometimes you can't change the past. It's, that's what it. The scars define you and all that shit, right? Like, I like that part. And when I'm reading... Oh, well, there's always lessons and stories. When I'm reading about what the, just, with the director... But it's not a new message. But what I'm seeing about what the director said after with the CGI and you know, he said that some of that was meant to be looked at like that because he's going so fast that it doesn't look real. And I was like, all right, now that I saw that, I got that. Because at the at the beginning, I kept telling you we were watching. I was like, bro, it's too much CGI. I don't know if I it like... It looks cheesy. It, it looks, looks cheesy fake, as yeah. shit. It looked like a video game at mm-hmm. one point. But... But he wanted those imperfections. I I, I don't know, man. I, I got to go watch Spider-Man and then tell you which one was a better... Well, Spider-Man's an animated movie, so it's going to be... The, this one had a lot of animation, though. And no, a lot but this of, like, is like a, like a comic... Comic animation. Animated yeah. type this of thing. This is the new shit that everybody's and, trying to drop and, now. And, and then the Spider-Verse, too, depending on what universe you're in, the, the animation is different, which is pretty dope, too. Um... Uh, yeah, I, I think I, I really I did like it, but what I did see about the breakdowns as far as like these YouTubers that break the film down more, this was like um, basically DC's not just their interpretation or their attempt of time travel, but it was also of time travel, but it was also of um, them resetting everything because uh, supposedly they're not gonna well they're not using that one actor to be Superman anymore. Henry? Mm-hmm. Henry Cavill, he's not gonna What do you be, mean? He's not gonna be the he's not gonna be Superman. Why anymore. not? Because Nicholas was, Cage that was, is gonna be Superman now. N- not that. Uh the, that part messed me you know, up. You know hard, he was bro. supposed to be Superman? Yeah, that, that, and, that part and then he like, started fucking up. Twisted me up. Like I was like, bro, I do not need to see this. At that's all. why that's why that movie was a nine, not a ten. If they Nicholas, have Cage? Nicholas Cage in there, no, hell no, bro. Me. With the long hair and everything, I, bro. I, that, can't do I was like, la narizota, la 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 cara. But so yeah, that's James Gunn is supposed to take over. He's supposed to take over the whole thing or whatever. All right, here, and he's here, supposed here. to recast him. And since the whole uh, Ezra Miller controversy, they're talking about recast. So it's like he's initiating what they call the New Fifty Two in DC. The where reason they go, I where they go to this new universe where it's like all different new. Um, you know, characters. I characters get, I get yeah. that. Hold on, but my question now is with this because Henry was originally doing The Witcher. If you guys haven't seen The Witcher, highly recommend that it. it's a great series on Netflix. Yeah, it's like the video game. Um, but they said that so he he they they wrapped up season three. After season three, they said, "Oh, Henry's no longer doing this role because he's going back to doing back, uh, doing Superman." So that's why when you're telling me right now that he's no longer going to do Superman, I'm like, wait, but he left Witcher 3, Witcher uh, at, at season three in order to go, go back to do Superman. So what do you mean? Yep, right here I'm reading Henry Cavill's Superman replacement has been narrowed down to, to three actors. And I'll give them to you right now so as soon as this thing loads for him. So I wonder if he's going to go back to the Witcher. Interesting. Because they were thinking of getting um, the brother of uh, Chris, Chris Hemsworth. To be the new Witcher. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly who, but the, Liam. I've heard about Henry. I'm getting, he's going to be replaced as far as Superman goes. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, uh, 
Yeah, they're they're trying to reset that DC whole thing. DC or Marvel. <sighs> this was a for me out of a lot of the DC films that have came out, I like this one a little bit better. I will say though, the latest Batman was dope, and I'm hoping that they come out with another one of that one because that one with um, this guy, the guy from uh, Chris, Christian Patton. Christopher Pattinson or whatever. That guy knows Chris Patterson. Yeah, he, that one, I don't know. Did you like that Batman? I like that, that. It was that was better. That I was like better that than this Flash one. They're both they're both out there with. And then also the because Joker this, film. This the, was this, an actual that, detective Batman. That, that standalone Joker film was also dope too. And I think they're gonna ruin it with that sequel. With the second one, you think so? Yeah. You don't like Amy Winehouse, huh? I mean, um, Lady Gaga, huh? You're gonna ruin it with that sequel. If Amy Winehouse, hey Loki, Lady Gaga. Gaga. I don't know if you ever seen any of her movies, but she's, she's a actually a great actress. Good actor. Have you seen yeah. House of Gucci? Yeah, she's yeah. House a great of Gucci, bro. She she killed it in that movie. Yeah, she's a dope movie. Yeah. The reason I say that because to me that Jared standalone Joker film is a perfect film. It doesn't need a, a sequel, in my opinion. I think it's such a great film that it should just be left alone. It shouldn't be a sequel. Interesting. So I hope they prove me wrong and I'm satisfied, you know, but I... And For all I know is this, that these episodes always need a sequel, so... Peace, y'all.